and thank you all for joining today's session so the topic for today's session is zero trust approach for securing infrastructure and data in the cloud i'm dr abhilasha vyas i'm presenting this topic under the track privacy privacy tech trust and data thank you so much for uh, security team for organizing this event and thank you so much kelly for all the support from the start let let me start the session now so this is little bit about me so i'm very passionate where it comes to promoting the women in tech field i am working as a business unit head on cloud security and bi with cloud tech and i'm also a microsoft certified trainer uh, i have a clear couple of certifications to understand the security stack which microsoft is providing and how security is managed in the cloud also i have a clear couple of other certifications to understand the cloud service providers security services and i am member of uh, azure communities also i am co-founder of swati.com it's a learning platform where you can go and learn things still we are working on that and also i am part of other communities where uh, the main focus is on promoting women to come in the security field this is what i love doing so this is about me before starting with zero trust architecture so i would like to discuss couple of pointers that why we are discussing this topic and what zero trust architecture is all about so if you see in this diagram uh, i have mentioned few uh, important pointers like infrastructure identities devices applications networks and data and in center of that we can say it's a zero trust security so day by day when we see that the attacks are happening in the cloud infrastructure organizations are looking for the approaches through which they can secure their data through which they can secure their devices through which they can secure the identities of those who are going to access the data so this particular architecture give us the uh, capability where we are not trusting any signal like any signal means i am saying that if you are trying to access any application every time you have to prove that you are a legit entity and you have the authorization to access the given information so here the zero trust architecture is basically working on three major principle and this architecture is designed so that the organizations can be prevented from the common security breaches at every layer we are providing the security settings so when we say that we have three common principles where zero trust architecture is working so the first architecture principle is i can say that never trust and always verify so for that whenever any request is coming to access the resources always we need to verify that particular request and only then once it is verified the access will be given so always authenticate and authorized based on all the available data points now we can have the pointers like users we can have the location we can have the device data even the platform which is running on that device so based on all the information we are going to authenticate and authorize uh, access for any kind of application or data so we are using the continuous verification so that we can make sure that whosoever is using the application that person is legit and not going to harm any information which is available so we are trying to always verify whatever signal is coming so the first principle is never trust and always verify and the second principle which is a very very important principle and which i want to highlight is assume breach so whenever any request is coming we have to think that it may be a breach it may be something that malicious attack can happen with this request so when we are going to assume breach we are going to always think about the defenses that uh, we can take a strong security posture we can go with the recommendations like mfa can be enabled for all the identities like uh, we can use some kind of intune we can use some log analysis softwares for applications we can have a proper majors sso will be integrated so lot of majors we can use if we are thinking that there may be a breach so when we are assuming a breach we will be always ready with certain defensive mechanisms so the first principle which we discussed is never trust and verify everything every signal which is coming 
the next principle which i discussed is assume breach that we have to assume that some kind of breach is happening and based on that breach you are coming up with the a defensive mechanism like you can reduce the attack surface also by applying those kind of defensive measures and the third principle which is again important is that you have to apply a least privilege access now this least privilege access means if user a is performing 10 tasks always give permission to that user for performing those 10 tasks not give more not give less because if we will give less again the productivity will be hampered and if we will go give more then the chances of breach will be there if that identity is compromised access will be more than what is required so the third is apply the least to privilege access which will also limit the access rights so if a user is having certain rights in the environment then user will be having only the specified rights which are designated to that particular role so in this particular thing it is very very important to understand the three principles which are basically trying to secure each and every thing which is there in the uh, cloud infrastructure so when we say that we are putting our data in the cloud in that case we have to also take care that what kind of security measures we are doing for the data what kind of security measures we are doing for the infrastructure so when we work on these three principles we will be taking care of each and every layer because we are going to verify each and every signal which is coming to the infrastructure so three principles are very very important and on these three principles if i'll say we have eight pillars on which these principles are standing so the as you see in this particular slide the first is infrastructure where the entire infrastructure things will come so how we are securing the infrastructure what kind of uh, security measures we are using in the infrastructure because we want to make sure that if any attacker is planning any kind of attack to the cloud infrastructure we will be ready to fight back with that we will be ready with the mitigation plan we will be knowing in advance what kind of incidence response mechanism we are going to use because every signal will be treated like it is coming for some kind of breach when we say that we have identities so for identities nowadays we see that the breach are happening so in zero trust architecture what we can design is for every architect of every identity for authenticating that identity we can go for the multi factor authentication so that if any one particular factor is breached there are other factors also through which identity can be authenticated and the legit identity will get access to the infrastructure so in identities also we can have certain principles on which we can work now in identities if we say we have certain roles which we can design which are known as role based access so based on the permissions which we want to give as it is mentioned in the principle that we have a least privilege access principle where we will be giving access which is required by the designation role of the user so in identities all the identities will be authenticated plus authorized with the access control which are required by the designated task so infrastructure will be managed identities will be managed now devices which are very important nowadays because employees are working users are working with their own devices office managed devices are also there and the users devices like bring your own device so now if it comes to your personal device we are not having any control that how these things are managed how uh, the devices are patched and how these devices are using the updated software so to manage those kind of controls we can limit the access to the office managed devices only or let's say we can uh, control the access by checking the platform which are running on the devices so we can have certain mechanism at the device level also so that from which device that request is coming that can also be measured and monitored so devices are also important part because from that request are generated and from that request only the identities applications and data will be managed and the access then the next part comes is the applications so when we say in the cloud every user is trying to access any application so for application nowadays we have a single sign on approach which is available so when we say that it is a single sign on why this approach is coming because 
we want to reduce the number of time user is entering their credentials because that can also lead to a breach multiple time when user is entering the information a phishing links can also come where the user are entering the information so in this kind of situation if application is integrated with single sign on there are less chances that a malicious user are getting access to the applications even you can also control the application based on the conditions as i have given the example earlier the location of the user a uh, user is trying to access from which browser which platform is running on that device uh, the level of the risk factor of the user which is designed an e application is trying to access p application is it uh, authorized to access that so a lot of factors also we can work on when we talk about the accessing the application so and also we can check the consent which we are giving for those applications because without the consent data will not be accessed so there are two type of consent also in this uh, like the user consent is required or admin can also give the consent so when we talk about the applications we have to take care of the security measures in terms of giving the access in terms of from where this request is generated and also what kind of applications are running in my organization so we have to use certain tools through which we can identify that are the applications which are used by the users of the organization are these applications are comply with the rules or the standards or the regulatories which i am using so risk factor compliance laws all these things we should be checking that what's happening in the infrastructure the next part come is the network so when we say that the network devices are connected in that we have to also check that uh, i can say that the resources which are accessed or uh, we have to have the uh, i can say that the segmentation the network access and also we have to do the encryption of the end to end traffic so when the data is traversing always we have to take care of the data which is at the rest data which is transiting so in that case when the data is transmitting from one end to another end we have to take care of end to end encryption we have to send the encrypted data in the secure tunnel so that we can make sure that the access which we are giving is secure because we are not going to trust any signal which is coming and the next part coming which is very very important that is data security and always whenever i am discussing about data security i am mentioning that before securing the data the organizations need to know that what kind of data is flowing in the veins so if i have one organization i have to first see that what kind of classification i have for my data which is confidential which is my very very personal data which can be used publicly which can be partially accessed so i have to have the proper classification of the data because every kind every different type of data is require a different security setting so i have to take care of those settings and based on that only i can apply the security measures so when we say data security first important part coming is a classification so you can classify the data and then you can have lot of policies enable for that data you can have encryption when you are storing the data you can have encryption at the storage level when the data is accessed you will be having end to end encryption when the data is traversing so all these factors are giving us the confidence that whenever access is given for any resource any application a security is a major uh, point which we are taking into consideration we are reducing the attack surface by creating the roles based on the designation of the users if i say that now with this architecture i hope that you understand that any signal which is coming will be verified and based on that only it will be given access to the application or data which is it asking so the benefit if i say for zero trust architecture is that we we are going beyond the security like before the incident is happening we are taking care of that we are always assuming that attacker is ready to attack attack the infrastructure so we are taking care of such things and based on that we are decreasing the infrastructure complexity because we are having these segments and on those segments we are trying to manage the security because we know that which segment needs which kind of security structure so we are decreasing the infrastructure complexity and also we can say that we are working in a hybrid physical and cloud infrastructure so where the applications which are running at the 
on prem we are taking care of the security of the on prem as well because now we have a concept of hybrid identity with a single identity we can access the on prem applications we can access the cloud application also certainly we need certain connectors and the agents to be installed in between them and also the authentication mechanism also because on prem is using a different authentication and cloud we have other different modern authentication mechanism so we can also work in this environment in a very very secure manner with the help of this kind of architecture where each and everything is first verify and then only access then also we can say that we are working on different variety of the devices variety of platforms and also from the different physical locations but if you work with this particular architecture the principles and the pillars we will be understanding that when to stop the access and when we have to work on the a given access so we can manage such kind of incidents which are happening when it is a, a locations which is a typical location sign in so these kind of things can be managed very very easily if we are going to take care of such architecture and we are going to implement this architecture at the multiple layers as as we we discuss about the layers infrastructure identities devices because each and every layer is having a different requirement of security and also we will be complying with uh, internal or the external regulatories because if we use data we have to comply with the certain regulatory authorities as well so if we say that uh, zero trust architecture is basically offering us the way through which we can manage the security risk the way through which we can manage the attacks which are happening up to certain level and also we will be having a option to understand that what is happening in the infrastructure because every signal which is coming we are going to verify that signal so these are the things which i would like to mention when we talk about zero trust architecture every a uh, signal which is coming we have to take care of that and also when we say that identities and data so whatever considerations we are taking care in our organization we have to make sure like the services we can use that is privilege identity management where a certain access is given which is the admin level access to certain identities we will be taking care that the access will be given at just in time only the access is limited the time period for which we are giving that access is also limited so such kind of uh, settings and securities also we can use when we talk about the uh, zero trust architecture because we will be uh, taking care of the dynamic and sophisticated cyber attacks which are happening with the help of such security settings with the help of such kind of management so uh, today's scenario if we say we have to use the best practices which is mentioned by the zero trust architecture and also we have to uh, see that how this entire things is happening when we say that the n number of applications are running and we have the identities which are managed by the uh, let's say the cloud identities and we have the on prem identities also and certain hybrid identities are also there but then also we are able to manage the uh, security if we are going to follow this particular principle so with this i would like to end this session and i would like to mention that always we have to follow the zero trust architecture to prevent and secure data application identities which we have and uh, the network where we have lot of devices and points we have to secure so with this model we will be able to secure each and every access and resource in the environment if you have any question you can post in the chat or you can connect with me on the linkedin as well thank you so much for uh, attending this session